Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Now, about three months ago, I built this saltwater capacitor bank, and basically what it is, is it is made of six bottles, glass bottles, and they are wrapped in this aluminum tape, and they are full of salt water, and they have a wire going inside into the salt water. Now, the salt water forms one plate of the capacitor, the dielectric is the glass, and the aluminum on the outside is the other plate of the capacitor. And these capacitors can hold a relatively large voltage, around 30,000 volts, and has a relatively large capacitance. It has a capacitance around the 3 nanofarads about. Now, I made this capacitor bank uh, to power a Tesla coil that I kind of rebuilt for a Maker fair, but it didn't completely work. It still had some small arcs. But that's not what the point of this video is. There's some weird corrosion going on on this uh, capacitor bank, and I'd like to try and explain it. All right, so this is the weird corrosion that I'm talking about here. As you can see, there's all this white powdery stuff coming out of the junction where all the wires that are going to the salt water of each water bottle are going to this little jumper right here and all this white powder is coming out. Now, this is a very interesting phenomenon here. And I think that the phenomenon that's going on is something called a sacrificial anode. Now, basically what a sacrificial anode is, is it's something to prevent corrosion. Now, let's say you have a piece of metal like a pipe underground, and this pipe is made of copper, let's say, and this pipe is going to corrode normally because it's just going to corrode. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to put something called a sacrificial anode on this copper. And so you'd electrically connect it to the copper, either by direct connection or by a wire. And what would happen is copper is more electronegative. That means it takes in electrons, and you want to mount another metal to it that's more electropositive. That's a metal that can give away lots of electrons. And so what would happen is when they're electrically connected, it would form an electrochemical circuit. And what that would do is the corrosion would affect only the sacrificial anode. And so the sacrificial anode would dissolve and corrode while the piece of copper or copper pipe wouldn't corrode at all because uh, the sacrificial anode is taking the corrosion for it. And so basically all the particles from the sacrificial anode that are being corroded would go to the that piece of copper, all the ions would go here. And so that's basically how a sacrificial anode works. So on the capacitors, you have this crimpon connector, and that is made of a different kind of metal. This is an example of what the inside kind of looks like. And I think it might be zinc or something, because zinc is very electropositive. And then you have the copper wires all going into it like this. Now, this sacrificial anode circuit only works when it's in something kind of like an electrolyte, like moist dirt or in seawater or something like that. Now the issue that I'm having with this capacitor bank is that the part where the corrosion is happening, there's no electrolyte. All the electrolyte is inside all the bottles. Now I think something is happening similar to something called capillary action. Now all these wires are stranded. That means they have multiple different strands. And water can actually travel up stranded material. So what I think happened is that the copper wire actually wicked up some of the saltwater solution inside the bottles, and it wicked that salt water into the little connector. And so this connector has some salt water inside it. That salt water is acting like uh, an electrolyte to make this corrosion process happen. And so I think this zinc is acting like a sacrificial anode. And what's happening is it's dissolving the zinc connector and it's depositing all that zinc onto the copper. And as it dissolves and uh, binds it to the copper, it grows this growth of corrosion coming off the copper. So I think what's happening here is the zinc is acting like a sacrificial anode, and the zinc ions are being deposited on the copper, and it's just growing over the course of a few months into a giant cluster of white corrosion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off some of this white corrosion. Let's see what is inside here. See if we can cut open that uh, connector and see what it looks like inside. All right, so I cut open this little connector that's holding all the wires together. And I really don't see much corrosion after I knocked off all that white powder stuff. It could just be maybe salt 
it was growing and there wasn't even any corrosion happening. Maybe the saw was just wicking up the the wire and just growing on the end is salt crystals. I really don't know. Uh, it may be the sacrificial anode, it may just be salt crystals, but I'm not seeing any corrosion on the, the zinc anode. Alright, now this is another interesting thing that happened. So this is the salt water inside one of the bottles. And this is really weird because you can see that there's kind of like these really shiny flakes that are growing on the surface of the salt water. And these flakes look like they could be copper or gold or something like that. They, they may just be copper deposited on the surface. Now I have no idea how that happened, but it looks really cool. You can see that there are all these uh, little flakes of copper that are just sticking on the surface. Let's try and see what happens if I touch one with a wire. Looks like those flakes are pretty metallic. Like gold foil almost. That is weird. Alright, so I'm still curious to see what this white powdery stuff is. So I'm going to see if some of it dissolves into some tap water. I'm going to test this water real quick because I want just to make sure that uh, no chlorine compounds were inside that powder and then I'm going to taste test it. That's about the pH of the tap water. Looks like it's somewhere around here. So at least it's not a low pH. Since it's not a low pH, we know that this uh, water or powder isn't a chlorine compound. If it was a chlorine compound, it would be a much lower pH because it would be more basic. And so I think this is probably safe to eat because this is basically just salt water or ocean water. And the copper stuff that was formed, all the green stuff in the salt, was just uh, part of the copper dissolving in. Uh, that's not going to be too bad for us because all the uh, water pipes are copper and they can have copper corrosion inside them too. All right, here we go. Let's see if this stuff is actually salt. I'll uh, break off a little chunk of it. I got some powder on my finger of the salt. Tastes pretty salty to me. Hmm. I, I don't know. You guys probably shouldn't eat uh, any any stuff from chemical experiments, but I think it was pretty safe to eat that powder. It tastes very salty to me, so it leads me to believe that that stuff may be salt, but I'm not sure it could be um, sacrificial anode corrosion too. I'm not really sure, so um, yeah, leave. let me know in the comments what you think that white corrosion powder was. Even if it was salt, that still doesn't explain the weird film on the surface inside the bottles, that film that looked like copper. Well, anyway, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.